Welcome back everyone to the Stacks Showdown. I know it's been a long time since we did the last video, I think it's been about two months, but a lot of work has gone into this, a lot of testing. We've got a nice array of contenders to represent, you know, traditional amplifiers to go with the transformer box. And then we are comparing the SRM1 driver with the SRD from Stax as well. So, you know, there is a a lot to go through and a lot of nuances that we need to, to talk about here. So I think before we get into the amplifiers themselves, we're going to talk about a transformer versus the uh, SRM1 or other Stax drivers that you can buy and the SRD. So anyway, let's get stuck into it. So what can I say about the initial results for the, the Lundell transformers? Well, they are excellent, basically. I'm going to overlay a graph here and you can see that the uh, Lundells are basically flat across the board. The only area and that they they sort of fall down in is 30 hertz and below. Now, that's not to say they can't do below 30 hertz. They can, but they are limited to about 280 volts RMS. Okay? So that, that is your um, the, as loud as you can go at that level before the transformers saturate and they distort. So that, that's not a, a big deal. Like 280 volts to 70 volts RMS is pretty damn loud already. And you're, you're getting up there in terms of um, what you could tolerate, I would think. So the SRM1 will go louder in those frequencies. So that that is the only place that this thing beats them like it's pretty much flat across the board i don't know why there's this assumption or misinformation i don't know what you want to call it i don't like the word misinformation but whatever that more powerful amplifiers for stacks will do better bass they will not this thing is flat until it gets into the high frequencies so there's nothing to gain in bass response um, but it's only 30 hertz downwards that this falls over. From As soon as you hit the 30 hertz mark, it matches or exceeds this. So you need to weigh that up, and possibly you could use bigger transformers to increase the saturation point at that 30 hertz and lower mark, but, you know... This is the prototype. This is where we're at at the moment. So I can only give you the results that I have. Now, in regards to the Stax SRD, like where am I at with it? Well, it's... I like it. Like it's a good entry point to start playing around with transformer boxes and to see what they offer. You can start trying all your different amplifiers or whatever. But it's just not good enough compared to the Lundell. Like this, the Stax SRD struggles in the high frequencies. It struggles in the low frequencies, like from about 50 hertz down. It, it, the transformers saturate really easily and you can't go very loud or they distort. And there's some issues with the, you know, the, the sine waves that are coming out, which I can, I can show you here. Um, there's just no real reason to pursue the SRD other than an entry point. So I'm happy to say that this is retired. This has replaced it and is the new benchmark for transformers at the moment. And the only thing that we're really interested in is, you know, direct drive amplifiers versus transformers. So yeah, um, we definitely eliminated one at this point and now we're on to bigger things. Now, you know, moving on from direct comparisons to the traditional Stacks offerings, we're going to start talking about the amplifier choices. Now, the K1 
can of worms you're opening with these transformer setups is that, you know, you've got to still have an amplifier to power this thing. And that opens up a whole new world of, you know, trying different amplifiers for a different sound signature or whatever you want to call it. But then you also have to figure out like what amps work really well with these setups. So what have I learnt so far? Well, this is quite sensitive, um, especially, you know, electrostats in general are sensitive. So you need to keep that in mind that whatever amplifier you choose has to be really quiet. And when I say quiet, I mean like no hiss, no noise floor, and it has to have a decent amount of power. And we'll get to the, the conclusion with the, how much power you need, you know, once we go through all the amps. But I can say straight off the bat that you must find an amplifier that is just silent. And unfortunately, that rules out a lot of vintage offerings, which really makes me sad. But, you know, it's just the way it is, unfortunately. But anyway, let's get stuck in the amplifiers and we'll start ruling some out and we'll go through them. So at the bottom of the amplifier results list, unfortunately, is the tube amplifier. This is the Encel CSM uh, 40. It is about 18-ish uh, watts a channel. It's fully restored. And unfortunately, it just doesn't deliver the goods in regards to what we need for this transformer box. The frequency response is pretty wacky. It's, um, you look at this graph, it just sort of goes up and down and it's just, it's, um, it's mainly because of the transformers that are inside this already. And maybe there's some interactions between those transformers and the Lundles. I personally think it's just because it's very, very dated technology and it has issues with hum, with hiss. Uh, it's just not clean enough if you want a dirty when i dirty i'm trying to say it in a, a nice way like vintage sound uh, which is a bit more romantic a bit more veiled then yeah you can have some fun with tubes i mean this is only sample size of one but this particular one unfortunately just doesn't do it for me i have fun with it occasionally having a bit of a listen but it's just not clean enough for you know, the the levels we're going to <laughs> to beat the stacks offerings that are already out there. So let's take this out of the running. Right, so what's in third place? Well, it's the Luxman, unfortunately. Oh, I want to love this thing. I really do. But in this company, it's just not, it's not there. I thought tubes and MOSFETs together would offer something unique in this sort of setup. And that's why I've got a very diverse range going on here. Unfortunately, it just doesn't compete. And the main issue is it's not power. It has enough power, about 65 watts a channel. The MOSFETs are also very good for power output. Um... So that there's no issues there. The issue that this unit has is noise floor. Like I said, it's vintage. And it does have a hiss in the background, or what is otherwise known as noise floor. And in regards to electrostats, I would say that it's a deal breaker. Like electrostats need to have an inky black, dead, silent background for the music to just sort of play into and yeah this has just got that that hiss in the background it's not really bad but it's there and it doesn't compete with the other amps and it doesn't offer anything that the other amps can't do as well so the luxman is out and on to the next and then there were two so we're getting down to the point now where you could take either option and th th these two are perfectly acceptable and it's more based on your use case and what you decide to, to you know put into your setup if you decide to go down a road similar to me these are the amps i have available so you know i have to pick a winner and 
And in second place, believe it or not, it's the Sony. And this breaks my heart because I love this amplifier. It has so much power. It is so clean. It, it's almost the ideal amp for this. You know, you can change it to 110 watts a channel, 200 watts a channel. You can change the, the power rail voltages by, by switching the impedance switch that we saw in the video that I did on it. It is um, ideal. And it, yeah, it is clean enough, surprisingly. There is a tiny tiny little bit of hiss in the background but it is so hard to hear that I would consider it good enough <laughs> the problem with this amplifier as much as it pains me is the transformer in it the transformer hums really loudly and I had this sitting on my desk of all places I know it's ridiculous but the hum that it puts out, you can hear it through electrostats because of how transparent they are to external sounds. So this takes it out of the running for me, unfortunately. Oh, I don't want to give this thing up. It's so cool and so heavy and so well built. But we're going to talk about the first place amplifier which is the topping la90 oh the topping la90 this thing is made in china but the build quality is just oh it's so nice it it really makes me second guess my opinions of made in china sort of stuff but this is um solidly built it's about 55-ish watts a channel. It has XLR inputs. It can be mono-blocked. The, bo the volume can be bypassed. It has an external power supply. It's quite small. You can put it on a desk. And it is my top pick for the Lundles at the moment. Um, what can I say about it? Well, the... The noise floor on this is non-existent. It is so clean. And I think I said that about the Sony, but it's even better than the Sony. There is nothing, absolutely nothing in the background. No hiss, no, no hum, no nothing. And it is perfect for electrostats. And it's small and it fits on your desk. So, you know, put that next to this and you're good to go. Now, the only area this might be a problem for some people is the power output. This is, this is really hard to, to say, you know, one way or the other. So 55 watts a channel, it's um, more than what these transformers will do below 30 hertz, but it's still like right on that threshold I found in my testing anyway. So, you know, these transformers below 30 hertz, I was saying they distort, you know, about 270 volts RMS. That's fine. This will clip about 310 volts RMS. So, I got away with it 90% of the time. But there were instances where I was able to get it to clip very rarely when it's very, very loud. Or um, I'm using EQ in whatever I'm listening to, which tends to chop down the output level a little bit, uh, just to, to make sure it's got a safe gain and it doesn't doesn't clip the the DAC or the you know the DAC output. So yeah, you need to keep that in mind. Ideally you want two of these, which is uh it's insanity because these are pretty expensive units. I it depends where you are in the world, but in Australia where I am, you know, you're looking at uh I think they're about thirteen hundred dollars each. So two of these twenty six hundred dollars. Um it's still way less than what you would spend on like a blue Hawaii or something, but it is a lot of money. A lot of money. But if you had two of these mono-blocked, as you can see in this graph, 
You know, you're looking at 600 plus volts RMS, which is way beyond anything you would ever need. And it's still less than the Sony, but it will get you by. So anyway, these are what I've tested. You know, you don't have to get these specific amplifiers, obviously. I just tried to pick a diverse group so you get an idea of what it takes to drive these Lundell transformers. Um, in regards to how much power I would recommend to run Lundell transformers, if you built one of these, I would say 100 watts a channel is a safe bet. It can be higher than that, but I wouldn't go lower than 100 watts per channel to be honest, and I think you'll be good. The noise floor is the big one. You have to really, really hunt for newer amplifiers, it seems to be, because I haven't really found anything from the 80s or lower that are good enough. There are, I'm sure, exceptions to that. I can only go on the amplifiers I've tried, but yeah, be careful, choose carefully, if you need to test an amplifier before you buy it, try some really sensitive headphones or something and just confirm that, you know, whatever you're getting is going to do the job because there's a lot of amps out there that I thought were really good that just can't, they can't handle this. They're not, they're not clean enough. So anyway, waffling on, what's next for the Lundell setup? Well, <clears throat> we're going to work on protection. So this has a fuse at the moment. That's all it has. There have been no problems with this. It is everything I could have asked for. It is so clean. It is closing in on my perfect amplifier setup for electrostats, and I'll be done with it. I'm never buying a, a Blue Hawaii. I'm not spending insane amounts of money on amplifier just to drive a electrostat headphone. It's not going to happen. So yeah, we're going to keep working on this. We're going to build protection for the bias and maybe protection for the output of the transformers so they can't overload if something went wrong with the amplifier or the volume was too loud or whatever. I have an enclosure for it that is ready to go. It's a um, nice aluminium enclosure, which I'll show in a future video. Um, I'm just waiting on the Stax connector because I've got a nice nylon one coming, uh, hopefully. And um, then we can build a new board that's not prototyped with protection, hopefully, and assemble all this thing, and we're done. And then we can move on. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a lot of talking, but you asked for it. You wanted, like, uh, my results, and I wanted to make sure I gave as much info as I could. And, yeah, we will uh, continue this in a future video where we take this even further. Until then, we'll see you in the next one.